I'm one month late. I missed the 100th anniversary of Charles Chaplin finally going on to make his directorial debut, The Kid. And I missed the anniversary by one month. Just lock me up. Old Charlie here has had quite the body of work stemming across the first 50 years of cinema. Yeah, the first. And you can see his influence to this day. I remember when the artist won Best Picture and I crapped my pants. Like a silent movie winning Best Picture at the Oscars? It really made my dreams come true. I never thought that a movie in black and white and a silent movie could ever come back and make such a statement like the artist did. It was a love letter to all those silent films that came before him. I saw influences of Gene Kelly in it, like from Singing in the Rain, but most of all, I was reminded of Chaplin. I'll try not to get my opinion too much in the way, but we both know that's probably not gonna happen. You have to understand that this time, Charlie Chaplin wasn't quite the tear-jerking, emotionally depth, yet funny at the same time personality that we know today. Before, he was just the tramp. He was amazing even when he was making those silent shorts for Keystone and the rest of those companies. But he never quite hit the emotional depth until this one, the kid. We follow a mother abandoning her child with a note that says to take care of him. She leaves the child in a stranger's car in the final effort to give the kid the best life possible while still leaving her independence to support herself. It's a painfully sad scene that then turns into a comedy when the car is shown to belong to a couple of gangsters. And these are not the people you want to have a kid in the car with. Oh, come on, like... Do they realize who's in the back seat? One little stop and that baby sliding off the seat. I'm sorry. And these are just the guys who would do that. I love their faces when they realize that there's a baby crying in the back of their car. Like, what would you do? This kind of sets the tone for the rest of the movie. There's a lot of dramatic scenes. They're balanced equally with the amount of comedy in them. The tramp then finds the child abandoned yet again, but he's not the blatant hero of this story. He's not inherently good. He actually tries to get rid of the kid. He tries swapping them, giving it to another stranger, and debates putting him in the gutter. Why does nobody want this kid? I really like this aspect of him, because it adds more depth to an otherwise one-note character. But as soon as he sees the note left from the child's mother, he takes full responsibility to take care of this child the best he can. So many memorable scenes. I really admire how they directed the kid character, played by Jackie Coogan. Like any child would, every child likes to mimic their parents. The funny scenes never go overboard, and they're evenly balanced with the dramatic scenes. However, it might go a little overboard, like when the orphanage director straight up steals the kid from the tram. Like really? You're stealing a child? Later in the movie, another guy steals the kid because there's a reward in the newspaper. He's still stealing the kid, but at least there's a motive. But here, he's stealing the kid for the sake of it. But now you understand that the tramp is going to do everything he can to protect the kid, which leads to some really good slapstick. I think the climax of the kid being taken away to the orphanage asylum, <laughs> asylum, that's funny, has to be one of the greatest climaxes ever. Some amazing camera work for 1921. When the tramp is running away on the rooftops, he looks down and you can see the car driving away with the kid. I wonder how long it must have taken for them to get that shot just right. These were cars from the 1910s and 20s, so maneuvering the cars for these stunts must have been a nightmare. No green screen gonna cover this up. The payoff at the end is superb, and it's worth watching the movie just for that alone. The mother ran into the child earlier in the movie without realizing it was hers. 
The tension in this moment is where this film really shines. She had to abandon her child at such a young age that when he got old enough, she doesn't even recognize him. Now you know the only way for her to find out is to find her letter. And when she does, all you can do is sit back in awe. But of course, even when he runs away, the kid is taken away from Chaplin yet again and leads to a surreal, almost beautiful dream sequence. You have to check it out. It's one of my favorite scenes. And that's the movie. If you can't already tell, I'm a big silent movie fan, and this movie started it all. I admire movies that work with very little. That's where I find most creativity stems from. A beautifully engaging story. You really want the tramp to be with the kid, but you also want the kid to reunite with his mother. And the movie connects these two conflicting ideas of what we want and doesn't blatantly answer them or make it clear until we get to the very end. And the very end of the movie is very short when everything gets connected together. And some might say that that's rushed, which it probably was. But they didn't want to go too in depth to paint a perfect picture of what actually happens. All you really needed to see was the mother opening the door for the tramp and the kid running up to him in his arms. Some great things about this movie. You got great performances from Chaplin, Edna Perviance, who plays the mother, who actually got to star in 33 productions with Chaplin. Dang. And Jackie Coogan as the kid. And what a great child actor for this time period. If you look at the movies that came out around that time, there wasn't much material for those child actors to work with. All they needed to do was run around or scream or cry. I would say not until the 80s with the Goonies and The Breakfast Club came out. Real child actors really started to get good. And there you go. One of Chaplin's best. Um, if you haven't seen this movie, you should really go check it out. Um, it's not that long. Yeah, how long is this movie? Come on, it's like, it's been a hundred years. You should go check it out by now.